Welcome back to the Avocado Open presented by OTV. You guys tuned into the front nine. You saw that Steve Rico came out hot with a five under. Nate Perkins, who I'm joined with today, shot a four under. Philo shot a one under and I shot a two under. What do we got here on the back nine? Yeah, it gets a little trickier here on the back nine. We're starting out with a par three, 300 feet, really tight gap up over the fence, right of the pomegranate trees, left of those big agaves that you see back there. The basket is tucked up and around the corner. It's a pretty tough green to access, Paige. Yeah, it is. And I really like the way that this hole is shaped. It's... uh. It's this low ceiling skipper into the green, and it's just a really familiar shot. Ooh, that's it right there. Wow. Yeah, you can't really throw it any better. Than no, Steve you really just can't. Threw it. <laughs> and that's what I'm thinking. Lining this one up, I just got to keep it close to Steve. And that's your Raptor. That's just a little early out of the hand. Yeah, a tiny bit early. And it makes the green really hard to access when you hit that early side it's a great shot into the back side of the green Philo's going to be going firebird right here Ooh. all right also a beautiful skip. shot pretty rare to see three shots inside circle one on this hole yeah, so I'm forced to throw a little sidearm roller out of the rough, just trying to get into the green and get uh, outside the circle look. Oh, and the patented commitment right there Yeah, that from was... the five-time world champ. This is amazing. Oh, it's definitely one I had to get low on. There was a bunch of branches right above my head, but I wanted that forward momentum, so just lunging into it. What a putt. I'm super happy we cleaned off all that poison oak down there. Yeah, that was rough. All right. Got a few birdies here from the boys. I'm glad to not lose two strokes. Yeah, that was a good par save. Speaking of par save, <laughs> wow. shout out to Par Save Productions for these amazing graphics. Look at these. You can see where we landed on the holes. They did custom colors, custom everything for us. So thank you guys so much for that. Yeah, the attention to detail from that crew is amazing. I mean, look at those maps. The maps with the little creek and everything. Yeah, I we did not give so those to much. them. They made that after they saw Nate's flyover. So <laughs> this is awesome. Hole 11, one of my favorite holes. Yeah, we're heading all the way back up the creek. It's a par four at 400 feet. It plays closer to 500 feet because of how uphill it is. Ideally, you want to land one on the road flat. There is OB right. Steve's is leaking out a little bit early, headed toward the cowbell hole. He's going to have somewhat of an obstructed approach. Yeah, he's going to have to step out from behind that tree. Nate getting that full flight. Oh, last minute bench hit, but it, you're still yeah. way up there. Yeah, that was my CD too. Oh, Ooh. look at this shot from Philo though. Wow, and a good skip. He found the flat part down by the creek. Perfect angle control on that uphill drive. That was a destroyer. And the Zeus just came out of my hand a little bit late and found the OB on the right side. So I need to try to get up and down a safe par here. This is a pretty tricky lie, actually. You're going with a force over with that same Raptor, right? Okay. Yeah. Over Sable Fairway, just really trying to force it over. Hit that high hillside and just stuck up there. All right, so Steve's stepping around here, throwing a forehand approach. It's got to get down. It does. It's a Doombird 3. Nice smooth Kaiser sidearm into the green. 
Thanks for sponsoring this whole night. <laughs> <laughs> Check out Nate's Patreon if you guys love his commentary. The single most player with the most commentary. <laughs> so good up by Philo. And this one is to lose another stroke to the boys. I got to hit that putt and just didn't have good enough footing to give full power. Man, he just doesn't show any signs of no, missing today. He really doesn't. Even that drive that was a little bit off, he still managed to get up and down for a birdie. And the way that Steve putts, these these single chain baskets are super receptive of his putt. Yeah, when yeah. When it hits with that little bit of nose up. Yeah, Dustin Keegan, our friend, called it pocket speed, and I think Steve has that perfectly nailed down. So Steve, jump into seven under. You're at six under. Philo's at three under, and I'm at one under. Uh oh, Paige. And we're headed into my favorite hole on the property. Hole 12. It's a par three. It's at 415 feet. Downhill. We are flying over hole five's basket up on the log, and then you have to kind of hyzer quickly back to the left tucked up here on the creek's edge a beautiful hole for sure it really is and visually too off the tee you can't see the basket but you see the giant pine down there on the left when you get about pin high with that tree you want to start hyzering and if you do you know you're in the money zone oh and steve's was high right but it punched through that tree and he's down in the creek for a look maybe 70 foot or something like that This is you with your cloud breaker. Oh, that was early out of the hand. If it gets a skip, yeah, and it does. Oh, wow. There is a backdoor putt over there, but it's kind of one of those hot, low probability putts. Oh, and Philo's going Rock over stall. everything. I haven't seen anyone attempt that shot yet. And we haven't even noticed noted, noted this. Excuse me. But Steve and Philo are playing blind. Yeah, they hadn't seen this course. <laughs> <laughs> so each time Philo steps up to the tee pad, he kind of has to like sit and take in the line for mm -hmm. a little bit and decide what he thinks is best. Well, we definitely weren't helping him out much. <laughs> <laughs> so that rock shot left him over there with this look. He has a good approach getting him really close to the basket. This is Steve from In the Boulders. Yeah, he's got some poor footing. He took a while lining this one up. Got the height. Oh! oh. <laughs> yes, what replay. A putt. Wow, look how far his right arm extends. Wow. Most players extend straight toward the basket, but Steve has that unique. He yeah. opens up, he lets it snap, and then he continues to open up that right hand. All right, Very, Steve. very unique putting style from Steve Rico. I could watch that all day, though, yeah, Paige. This too. is awesome. And a decent bid. Decent bid. You can't really see the basket too much. You're just, like, trying to send up a prayer over those bushes. Can you see it from where you're at? I could see oh. the top of the oh. yellow. Hello now to save par. Solid cleanup. I love the water pipes that you see. They may not be visually appealing, but just knowing that that's the well water from our own water tower on this property, so cool watering all 350,000 pounds of avocados. <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> all right, so Steve with that huge putt jumps up a stroke, another stroke ahead of Nate, eight under par. Blind on this course so <laughs> <I know>. far. <laughs> it's sweet. All right, hole 13, it's a par three, 250 feet, heading uphill once again. You start off with pretty small gap you have to throw underneath the hanging avocados this 
basket is tucked up on this hill in between these fallen pines. I really love this green. Me too. If you miss those trees, you pretty much have a putt no matter what because the, the green just is so sticky up there. And uh, I love that little uphill slant. Yeah. And these cottonwoods right here on the left side of the tee pad are the biggest trees on the property. So it's a really, really sweet spot. And that was my night strike too. Just a little too nose up, it rose up in the wind. Philo peering that gap under the basket. That and was his firebird too. Yeah, it was. A little bit early out of my hand again, but I did hit the gap, so I'm about pin high on the left 40 footer. And you knew right away too. Yeah. It was hot. It was about 90 degrees this day. I remember we were struggling to find energy. Amazing that was putt. circle two. Yeah, it was. Uphill. 40 footer, maybe. Into the maybe hardest basket to catch a putt on on the pro property. Steve showed up to play. Yes, he did. He has such a competitive spirit, and he was telling us he's been competing since he was nine years old, and that's all he knows. The man does not want to miss. <laughs> <laughs> Philo. <laughs> He's such a character. If you guys didn't know, Philo is a comedian yeah. and a musician. <laughs> oh, Philo. World traveler. Man of many talents. Very entertaining. All right. Steve's pulling away. Three stroke lead. So we climb up the hill to hole 14. It's a par three, 225 feet. This basket is hanging from this pine tree and the cage is actually sitting on the ground. This one is screaming ace run. We line the backside of the pin with some OB. OB to the right as well in the avocado grove. It requires touch for sure. Yeah, it really, really does. and. If you put a little bit too much nose angle on it, it's really easy to sail past OB. Oh. Hit it. And we wanted to put that OB back there just to kind of like challenge our touch. And it's just, this one's so difficult, even though it's short. Oh, you gotta drop. That one's floating. Drop, 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 drop. Oh, and he catches the log from the tee <laughs> pad on, on eight and it keeps him in bounds. <laughs> oh. I know real quick that it's got a chance of floating long. But a little Lucky bit high right hits there. that branch and drops. And Don't. you're going fierce? Yep, fierce on this one. Too hot. Drop. I love oh. the line. Just a little bit too high. That <laughs> thing just glides forever, and I knew it was OB deep. That was a cool little angle straight over the cameraman's head. Uh-huh. So I'm going to have a very similar spot for from Philo, but I'm going to be putting to save par. Rico is on a roll. He's moving right now. He's heading farther and farther under par. Not looking back. It's a good birdie pickup, though, from you. <laughs> All right, and you look pretty happy about that one. <laughs> Shout out to Resistance Disc for being our scoreboard partner. Grip Equipment 
for being our flyover partner. I love these flyovers. Good work on these, Nate. <laughs> it's a ton of fun. <laughs> love flying the drone. Won't be the last time we do no. something like this. All right, hole 15, heading back across the creek. Par 3, shortest hole in the course, 152 feet. We are all talking about it. We just want to see one of us throw it in. Yep. And there is OB deep. It's about 40 feet deep on the other side of that sidewalk. Um, definitely comes into play if you're running the aces. So we are considering that as well. And here's that same clutch that Come on. Stevie's Come on. been throwing the entire uh, round. That wind pushed it yeah, I was looking good, but that wind just dropped it. Look how little room Philo requires to throw. Those little baby steps. <laughs> yes. Yes. Drop. Drop. Oh, oh got you got it. the top of the basket. <laughs> that was close. Beautiful lemon trees to the right of us as we're teeing. Just pulled that link a little bit to the right. Stayed safe. And you're going fierce again? Yes. Yeah, just a little early again, and that's maybe like four times in these first 15 holes, so I'm feeling some frustration there. Trying to get up and down to save par. Yeah, I definitely wouldn't recommend filming the A-cam and playing at one of the bigger events. No, I'm not going to do that. <laughs> <laughs> it was interesting to switch off like that. Yeah, it was. That was a good... Par putt. All right, good birdie pick up two in a row. Nice. That's, drive. I mean, that's what you got to do to keep up with Steve out here, huh? Yeah, he's on a tear. He's only had four pars up at this point. Yeah, he's 11 down through 15. Yeah. Just came to putt on these baskets today. <laughs> I don't think he warmed up either. Did you see him warming up? I didn't see him warming up. No, you shot the pre-round interview with him. <laughs> <laughs> All right, it's so a hole 16. It's a par 3, 257 feet, but playing uphill plays more like 300. It's back in the creek. There is OB on the right that you can find if you hold on to it too long. Yeah, I like this one because, uh, you know, the avocado trees on the right make you not put it down the right side as much, but that slight slope down the, to the left makes your disc kaiser out. Yep. It's a good little tricky par three. I like that play on it, the sidearm down the left side. This is your tour series buzz? Yes, it is. Click more stable than the other buzzes, so I can put a little more power on it. Punch through. Oh. Thinking about that last early release, let that one go a tiny bit late, overcompensated, and I find myself 70 feet short on this one. Philo also on the short side. Looks like he's lining up about a 50 footer. Just a tiny bit low. He's been a little bit low today. Can't stop he this hasn't. man. Can't stop this man. Moving up to 12 under. A little left side right there. Yep. Glad that one's stuck. <laughs> Our 
favorite snack has been all the fruit out on the course mid round. <laughs> Can't not get enough citrus. No. Hole 17, it's a par 3, headed back to the clubhouse, 372 feet. There's two ways to attack this one. You can take this low route, which is kind of like a right hand low hyzer flip up to flat shot, or you can kind of throw one over the orange trees and have it hyzer late. Yeah, the, the first option just requires so much touch. It's, it's a really fun shot to throw, and we've both been throwing it while we've been here, but during the tournament, I think a lot of us, all four of us are gonna opt for the hyzer play. That is looking good, maybe a little hot. All right, catches the, the chicken, chicken coop. coop. <laughs> <laughs> Those chickens are growing fast. Yeah, they are, and luckily they're not in that part of the chicken coop yet. They're still too small for it, so they didn't get scared right there. Go. Philo, a little more inside, so he's gonna be closer to the pin. Also a little too hot though, and hits the chicken coop backboard. Oh, you're going Raptor on this one too. Yeah. Ooh, it's got a chance. Do something cool. Ooh. Ooh. That looked like just it was just over the top of it. Barely over it. Yeah. Yeah, I was throwing Zeus, but I was kind of having the same error as them, just a little bit too far. So I wanted to clip down to the Raptor. Ooh. I liked your line, just maybe a tiny bit low and clips that tree and drops you 50 short. All right, and this is 50 footer back at it. Uh -uh. Full commitment right yes, there. Yes, I was definitely running it. I, I uh, realized how few birdies Ooh. I was getting. Oh. Wanted to run that one. Now I'm left with this tricky lie. Step out to the left. Oh, yes. Beautiful putt. Thank you. On the single chain elevated. All right, good comebacker. Yeah, the, these baskets like really help you with putting confidence, I feel like, because you when you hit a putt on it, you just know how solid that putt was. All right, and some good birdies from Philo and Steve. I don't think Steve has missed one on the back. No, he's perfect on the back. Yeah, he's eight for eight on the back so far. <laughs> See if he can this make it awesome. nine. Par 3, 380 feet over the solar panels, over the creek, over the garden, back toward the house. Basket is tucked in a beautiful location underneath this Jeffrey Pine back here. The road is out of bounds. Anything in that fenced in area is going to be safe. Yeah, it's uh, like a double island, so you can lay up into this fenced-in area, as Steve oh, is doing. That's pretty much a perfect layup. If you're not going to make it to the green, that's where you want to be. Yep, exactly. And Philo follows suit. You going definitely, for the screen I'm here? definitely trying to attack this pin. That was early out of the hand, but it crosses the road and finds the island. Going with my Zeus here, my favorite distance driver. Little bit too turned, but it's getting this late hyzer back, and I'm going to be pretty close to Nate over there on the safe green. That was a rip, though. If you yeah. release that a little bit wider, yep. that would have been beautiful. File now up and over the fence. Not quite high enough. Oh, Stevie's going through the gap in the fence. Oh, oh, he actually a foot had, off a perfect back nine. Yeah, actually had an open look through that gap. Ooh, oh, just a tiny bit high from 50. I still haven't toed this one. You'll get it. You'll get it soon. Oh, just barely yeah. right. All right, 
right, so C going with a par to round out the back nine. He's going to be taking a commanding lead into round two. And now this isn't just a casual round, you know. This might be non-sanctioned, but we're we're playing for two thousand dollars for first place. Yeah. So I'm, I'm definitely a little bummed with how how we played, but. Yeah, we got a full round ahead still and lots of birdies, as you guys saw, are available. So I'm excited to see what happens here on the back round. You guys check it out. Subscribe, hit the bell. Special shout out to my Patreons for making coverage like this possible. And another thanks to all the sponsors whose logos you guys have seen all video long. These people made it happen. So if you guys want to support them, check out their links in my description below. And there's even some promo codes for you guys to enjoy.